why is the mid in what's uh, given in the middle? Then basically, uh, because of this uh, Markov property, then basically using the uh, joint probability to conditional probability, you have this and that, <clears throat> right? And uh, this one from the Markov property, you can write this way. So it can be given as a product of the two conditional probabilities, okay? <clears throat> we call this uh, Markov chain from X to Y to Z, okay? All right, that's uh, what it is. You're supposed to have learned this uh, in random variables or uh, uh, undergraduate probability class, right? And uh, <coughs> we, we can apply, yeah. But, so we can now apply data processing inequality. If X to Y to Z is a Markov chain, then mutual information between these two, the closer one, and the mutual information between X and Z, right? Data processing inequality goes this way, okay? So closer, farther, right? Basically, the amount of information that can be measured by this and that has this inequality. How do you prove that? Basically, you use the chain rule of uh, mutual information, take the mutual information between X and Y and Z together, then using the chain rule, mutual information between X and Y, mutual information between X and Z given Y, okay? That's the one chain rule application, and then uh, you can uh, do that again with uh, X and Z first, and then Y, right, given Z. So basically that's the mutual information uh, chain rule, right? And then <coughs> we, uh, we, we can say here that mutual information between X and Z given Y is equal to zero. Right? And uh, mutual information between X and Y, given Z, non-negative. Okay? And then I, I am asking why. Can anyone can tell me why? First one first. Yeah, conditional independence. Basically, that was given right? uh, as an uh, as a, uh, input argument, right? So since uh, X to Y to Z is a Markov chain, right? given Y, past and future are independent, we said, then basically that should be equal to zero. So this part is equal to zero. right? And then we are comparing blue to the green up here. right? And then this one here is uh, what? Mutual information, right? So it should be non-negative. So uh, this one together with the non-negative number is equal to mutual information between X and Y. Right? So if I consider only the uh, blue and uh, green, basically blue is, is supposed to be larger than or equal to the green. Right? So that's uh, a proof of uh, data processing inequality. Right? And uh, uh, what happens uh, if uh, you have an equality? So ba basically equality then means, aha, uh -huh, then uh, I need to have uh, this part zero as well. That means X to Z to Y is also Markov chain, okay? So uh, <coughs> in, the, in, in, in this case, we can let Z to be the function of Y Z to be the function of Y, right? And uh, basically, for example, let's say if you are using neural network, right? You have an input image, and then you do use a neural network, and then you find out the, uh, the uh, you know, uh, value, if it, uh, this is a train or no train, things like that, right? So that type of mapping, right? Okay? So if you have trained uh, your neural network already, then the weight matrix is fixed. 
then it, you can exactly say this as well, right? So this one says that no matter how you know, sophisticated your uh, neural network is or your uh, signal processing algorithm is, right? This, uh, you cannot create any new information at all. Okay? What's given as a input to your signal processing algorithm, that has all the information about the inference question that you are asking. Okay? For, in this case, for x. Right? You are trying to inference on something about x, right? And then you get a data y. And then you do the signal processing, which is z. Right? You know, data uh, between your uh, inference variable x, the mutual information between the two has the older information that is necessary, right? Okay? Uh, mutual information between the inference variable x and the neural network that you have designed, right? The best this uh, neural network can do is mutual information between x and the data. That's what it is, okay? So the function implies an arbitrary data processing on y. The inequality implies that uh, any data processing will not help us uh, understand x any better, okay? So that's a good uh, summary, okay? So you can, oh, you are not going to go. You are not going to go. Okay. And the Markov chain, uh, basically, we can talk about uh, binary state Markov chain like this. So uh, zero state and one state, and then it uh, stays in the zero state with the probability one minus p, jumps to state one with the probability p, and then from state one to zero, Q and then staying in Q uh, in first the state, I mean stay in the state one with the probability one minus Q, right? And then I can talk about transition matrix, initial distribution, stationary distribution, and so on and so on, right? And then the, basically the bottom line is that <coughs> I can define the nth jump, let's say Tn, and then Tn is the uh, vector defined to be probability that nth uh, jump, uh, you end up at state zero, and uh, this one is at state one. And then that is equal to p to the power of n times pi, and then you can prove it by aggregating the jumps, the probability of jump, right? And then you can obtain the stationary distribution, which is uh, this. Uh, S is a stationary distribution uh, taking the limit of uh, n over Tn. Okay? And uh, basically, since uh, uh, it's uh, stationary, basically using S equal to P times S, where P is the transition matrix, then you can obtain the stationary distribution and then this is a particular example, okay? Right, so uh, using this one, basically uh, you start off with the initial distribution, we call it pi, right? And then you have uh, S, which is a uniform, ah, non-uniform distribution, then can you, uh, we can say that entropy start off with the maximum entropy, but as the ch uh, chain uh, moves on, uh, as time uh, goes on, it uh, approaches toward the state where uh, entropy of S, where S is non-uniform. So this uh, entropy of S is uh, smaller than entropy of pi, right? So in this case, entropy decreases, right? You can design a Markov chain like that, okay? And uh, also you can design a non-uniform pi and then S uh, uh, uniform, then in this case, entropy increases over time, okay? So uh, using this, basically you can design a Markov chain where entropy increases or decreases, 
based on your uh, uh, architecture, basically pi, s, and so on. Uh, <clears throat> uh, I have a video about this, so you can, if you need uh, to brush up your Markov chain skills, right? Uh, you can take a look at the video and. Um, and the second law of thermodynamics says entropy of an isolated system always uh, non-decreasing, so basically increases over time, right? But uh, that is the you know, physical uh, you know, law of uh, di uh, thermodynamics. But in the case in mathematics, uh, you know, the Markov chain that you design, you can have it increases or decreases, okay? It's up to you. You can design it. So that's that. Now uh, it co I c come now down to the sufficient statistics. Right? This one is interesting. Uh, we have a data processing inequality uh, that we have covered a moment ago. Now let's suppose an index, index set data, right? Like this, and the family of PDFs like that. Okay. So for example, these these are the the, the classification problem, right? That you encounter many, many times, right? For example, you have a vector space, right? You have a data points gathered here, another one right there, maybe with a different symbol. This one is that one. But sometimes they uh, mixed up in some region. This is the region where you have a, a classification errors, right? So you can de design this as a, some type of a distribution, right? A, another type of distribution, right? You can uh, have them together, right? And then in such a case, you can have a, a distribution, F1 and F2, in this case, two distribution, but uh, you could have another distribution, right? another one, right? Like that, and then you want to design a, a signal processing algorithm to classify them well with a small probability of error, right? That type of problem you can think about. So in this uh, case, uh, data is a random variable. Selecting one of these four, right? Uh, or n, n of these, uh, you know, uh, family of distribution like that. And then x be a sample from a distribution in this uh, family, okay? And uh, Tx be a function of the sample for the inference of data. So inference of data here in this particular case is you get a sample from this uh, space and then you want to decide which family this sample came from, right? That type of problem you will always encounter, right? <coughs> Hold on a second. Right, so <clears throat> from uh, the random variable data, you get a sample X, and then we call that capital X. So X is a, a random variable, and uh, it represents a sample from a distribution. And then TX means what? You do some data processing, right? Some mapping, right, from the data to uh, a variable, this is a variable that you can use, use it uh, to classify, right? So thus in this case, we have a Markov chain from data to x, from x to tx, because the tx is a function of x, right? So it is a, a Markov chain. And in this case, then we have a data processing inequality, in mutual information between data and x, should be greater than mutual information between data and Tx, right? Okay. Uh, equality is achieved when T, the data processing that you have done, is the optimal one, right? So in this particular case, we call it sufficient statistic. If uh, this uh, variable, as far as concerning data, has an equal amount of information with the data itself. Okay, so that's what the data processing inequality is. Okay, and uh, 
I'm not going, I have a long proofs uh, in the videos. I have, I think I have a two or three videos in this regard. But uh, since I have a video, I will, I'll be very brief, okay? And then the one example of sufficient statistics, uh, this is a textbook example, basically, is, is this. You always start with the binary. Right? Once you understand binary, then you can do quaternary, you know, you know, sixteenary, you know, whatever, right? Continuous, whatever, right? So you understand binary, you understand most. So in this uh, case, let's say we consider a sequence of cointosis, x1, x2, and so on and so on, all the way up to n cointosis. And then I said they are IID, indep independent, identically distributed, with the parameter theta. The theta is a probability of xi is equal to 1. Okay? Top, okay? bottom, like that. And then given n, the number of ones in n trials is a sufficient statistic for theta. Okay. So if we want to make an inference on the data, let's say data was a hat, right? You do n trials. How many success uh, do you have usually? If it is an unbiased coin, right? If you ha have done uh, uh, n trial where n is equal to hundred you would probably have a 50 or a 51 or a 49, right? So roughly it is a half, right? So here we are trying to prove that that is a sufficient statistic. Some of the successes is uh, the best that you can do about the inference uh, on data, okay? That's what it is. And uh, uh, I have a long proof uh, in, the, uh, in the website, video, and the lecture notes as well. But uh, here is a short proof, okay? So here, data, data head is a, is a sufficient statistic for data, okay? So uh, then basically we uh, need to show that uh, we have a Markov chain relation between, uh, from data to t to x, okay? So because the t should have uh, sufficient information to tell about the in, uh, input data, right? So that's this one. And then basically you can talk about this a little bit. So uh, it is uh, considering this probability, okay? Considering this probability. So uh, I said it is the one over n choose k, if uh, k is equal to this, okay? Otherwise, it is zero, okay? Can, if we can tell this is true, then you don't have to see the long note, right? If you don't understand this, then you have to see the long note and then watch my video, okay? Step by exp explanation, okay? So here, anyone can explain this? Yes, we? Sing me. Wait, go get your proof and draw. Grumman, you give an accent. Tell me, I have a video. A video by day. I grew a hintle jump the choice. Then, Tamorunda, I grew and did it. Jocom, that also gave him to Jocom to go. So what is that that we are asking? Uh, data to uh, data to t, right? And then t is uh, sum of uh, x. I uh, notation x i. Okay, so sum of x i is equal to what is x? x is actually a vector. 
이거죠? n은 기, 주어진 거고. 그죠? x, what is the uh, range of x? Yeah, zero one. So each one of them is from this set, right? Zero and one, right? Success, fail, right? Top and bottom, right? And uh, basically, this is the number of uh, uh, successes in n trials, right? And uh, what we need to know, what we are asking, so probability that, let's uh, do an easier one, let's say. Let's call, uh, let's make n is equal to four, four, okay? Uh, Can, can we do this? Shinjuk Pune? Shinjuk Pune? Shinjuk Pune? Shinjuk Pune? Shinjuk Pune? 굳이 더 넣는데 <웃음> 데이터로 식이 나와야지 그러면 그지 그지 얘 하려면 어떻게 해야 돼요 데이터를 인볼브 시켜야 되겠지 그럼 어떻게 해야 돼 요거는 이제 쇼트핸드 노테이션으로 그냥 x 1이라고 할게요 x 1 이거 반복하고 있으면 진도가 안 나가니까 그다음에 데이터를 어떤 스몰 베어리블 c 그죠? 0이나 1이 데이터가 뭐였죠? 데이터는 저 probability x is equal to 1이죠. 이거 동전 던지게 했을 때 앞면 나오는 확률. 근데 그거를 나도 이거를 랜덤 베어리어블이라고 놓을 수 있잖아. 그래서 그죠? 근데 이 c는 뭐다? c는 무슨 숫자죠? 아, 옳지. 그렇지. 그러면 0에서 1 사이의 숫자입니다. 이렇게. 이렇게 하나씩 디자인해서 들어가야지. 그죠? 그럼 그렇게 하면은 이제 요거 이렇게 하면 할수 있잖아요. 그죠? 그러면 요거 할 할라 그러면 어떻게 돼? 이거 해야지. 이거 하고 이거. 그죠? 서메이션. C는 0에서 1. 그러니까 인테그레이션으로 바꿔야겠네. 그죠? 뭐, 딥 데이터, 뭐, 이런, DC, 이런 식으로. 그죠? 근데, 그런 거 신경 쓰지 말자고. 인테그레이션 하지 말고, 그냥, 이렇게 생각해. 그죠? 그러면 어떻게 해야 돼요? 실제로는 C belongs, C belongs to some, uh, interval. 그지? C, 요게 C 플러스 델타 C, 뭐, 이렇게 해야 되잖아. 셋으로 만들어야 되니까. 아웃컴 숫자 하나로 하면은 안 되잖아요. 그죠? 이렇게 하는 건데, 이거 신경 쓰지 말자고. 그냥 샘플링 했다고 치고, 이렇게 생각하자 말이에요. 그죠? 그러면 이제 모든 C에 대해서 다 하면 되잖아. 요, 요거 할수 있죠? 그러면 데이터가 정해졌을 때 이걸 할수 있어, 없어요? 데이터가 정해졌어, 이제. 그러면 얘가 1이 3개래. 네 자리에. 확률이 뭐예요? 그러니까 C가 마치 half 같은 거야. 지금 half 같은 걸로 주어졌어. 그러면 이건 뭐예요? 요, 요 놈은 C의 4 빼기 1. 그 다음에 뭐지? 네? 1승. 그죠? 그죠? 그러면 이거를 뭐, 이게, 이거를 n개 중에 1의 개수. 이렇게 표현할 수 있겠죠? 그러니까 1의 개수를 뭐, 인덱스를, 어, 안쓴 인덱스가 뭐냐. 뭐, j라고 할까요? j? 아, k라고 했나? 노트에서? k. 그러면 k개 1, n개 중에. 그런 확률은 다 이거죠? 
그죠? 그런 확률은 다 이거야. 그죠? 음. 그러면 for for all x 그지? whose 1의 개수가 k인 거. 얘 yeah, probability는 다 이거네. 그죠? for for all x whose ones is equal to k. the probability of x capital x equal to that x is equal to 이거죠. 그죠? given data is equal to c. 그죠? 그렇게 하면 되죠? 그거랑 이제 <웃음> 저기서 우리가 보여야 되는 거는 t. given t를 했어. 똑같은 문제인데 x인데 데이터가 c고 그 다음에 t가 이번엔 뭐 k로 주어졌네. 이거를 했다. 그리고 이것도 k계의 1이고 그죠? 그러면 얘는 어떻게 돼요? 요거에다 컨디션 한 것만 차이가 났잖아요. 그죠? 그러면 그거는 어떻게 되지? 바로 직관적으로 그냥 가버리면? 그렇지. 그러면 요, 요게 이제 그러면 N 컴비네이션 중에 K계에, 그지? 어, 요런 벡터가 있기 때문에 그런 놈들의 프로버티는 다 아까 여기 계산한 것보다 C에 N-K, 1-C에 K승 이렇게 돼 있고 위에 프로버티는 뭐다? C에 N-K, 1-C, K 이렇게 됐잖아요. 이거 캔슬 되는구나. 그러니까 1 over n 수수 k만 남는다. 이게 이제 직관이에요. 이렇게 해서 푸는 게저 결과지. 그죠? 저기 나와 있는 결과. 그래서 이제 일반적으로 했을 때는 얘가 어, 어, for each x에 대해서 하면 어떻게 해야 되지? k가 주어졌으니까 이거는 k가 주어졌으니까 뭐 이, 이, 얘는 셋을 내가 어느 셋으로 한정시킨 거예요? 이 X라는 이 모든 X 셋 중에서 파티션을 해가지고 요 놈들인데 요 놈들은 뭐다? 요 놈들은 위치는 다르지만 뭐 1, 1, 0, 1, 그 다음에 얘는 1, 0, 1, 1, 뭐 이런 식으로 위치는 다르지만 1의 개수가 k인 셋. 그지? 그셋 중에서 한놈 이야기 한 거잖아. 그죠? 1의 개수가 k인 셋 중에서 한 놈. 그러니까, 셋 사이즈 분의 1. 이렇게 되는 거지. 그죠? 어, 요, 요, 요 그림이 제일, 아, 이거, 이거 쓰, 쓸모없고, 요게 제일 좋다. 요건 쓸모없고, 요건 쓸모없고, 요건 노테이션이니까 그냥 잊어버리고. 그거는 자세하게 보고 싶으면 비디오를 보고 추석 동안에, 아, 추석이 아니죠. 개천절 동안에, <웃음> 어, 어, 반복해서 좀 들어보세요. 네. 그, 어, 요건 다 지워버리고 요것만 보면 돼, 그러면. 요거. 그죠? 그렇게 해서 하면은 요거지. 그니까, 아, 한 가지를 안 했다. 저기에서 X가 happen to be for all X니까 여기서 골랐다. 여기서 골랐다. 그럴 때는 그 프로버빌리티가 뭐가 된다? 0이지. 그지? 이 셋에 속하지 않았으니까. 오케이. 그, 그거가 여기 나온 거예요? 여기? 오케이. 자, 그러면은 sufficient statistics 도 커버가 됐고. 아, 이 example을 몇개더 했어요. 그래서 한번 보세요. 그, 그 X와 Y와 Z 이세 가지를 어떻게 manipulate 해야 아, rigorous하게 그 솔루션을 만들 수 있는지. Alright? And then the Fano's inequality. This is another heavy subject. Type of convergence is another heavy subject. I want you to take a look at the videos before coming to the class so that I can be, uh, you know, stay on insights rather than teeny weeny details. Okay? So watch the videos. These, uh, these are very important stuff. 
Okay. Once uh, you understand uh, up to this part, rest of them be, uh, becomes easy. Okay. All right, I will stop right here. Okay, and. Uh,